why don't you quit stalling and call Laura on the phone before you leave? I don't know, Brian. Look, you've been staring at that phone for 20 minutes. I mean, don't waste any more time, man. Laura's gonna be leaving for school any minute. You want me to dial? No, Brian. Laura doesn't want to talk to me. Oh, you expect me to believe that, No, Brian? it's true. It's true. When I talked to her last night, she said that if she heard my voice on the phone, that it would just make it harder on her. In fact, she's gonna go to the hospital late today so that there is no chance that she has to run into Bobby and me. Laura's gonna have to face you sooner or later, Scotty. So call. It's what you really want to do. No, Brian, it's better this way. It's a clean break for the both of us. All right, all right. All right man. It's your life. Look, Brian, uh, well, there's, there's one favor that you can do for me. Just name it. Well, would you keep an eye on Lee, because I'm, I'm kind of worried about him. Why? He didn't sound like he was drinking when you phoned him this morning, was he? No, 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 it's not that. It's just that I, I asked him if I could come by the office to say goodbye, and he said that he wasn't going to go in. He said that uh, he just wasn't going to be working. And it's not like Lee to take a day off unless he's really feeling rotten, you know? Sure, I can check in on Lee later, but look, why don't you stop by the Metropolitan Club yourself on your way out of town? Well, I told him that I would, but he didn't want me to. He wanted Bobby and I to get an early start so that we wouldn't be on the road after dark. Anyway, would you take a look, you know, maybe you need someone to talk oh, to or Scotty, something. Scotty, I told you, I'll take care of Lee for you. Now, I wish I could say something to make you feel better and we all be in good shape. Well, Brian, I just don't say... Congratulations, or all your best, because I just definitely don't want to hear that. Look, man, you're only doing what you think is right. Brian, I'm doing the only thing that I can do under the circumstances. That's all. Say it any way you want. But, Scotty, I really admire your guts. Yeah, well... Well, thanks, Brian, you know, thanks for everything. Bobby, look, I've got Lee's car double parked. Now, uh, where are your suitcases? My uh, trousseau's all packed in, in my bedroom. Scotty, don't just stand there like you're going to the electric chair. Say something. Like what? I don't care anything. Something nice. Bobby, look, come on. Can we, can we just go, please? Boy, marriage is really going to be a barrel of laughs if this is going to be your attitude. Look, I don't want any lectures about my attitude, Bobby. Okay, I am just trying to make the best of the situation. How? Uh, How? By blabbing all over the hospital that oh, we're going to get married? come on, I only told a couple of people. Bobby, this is nothing to celebrate. Right, Do you understand right, that? I nothing. Not say I not another word until we get to Canada. Good. I'll go get your trousseau. I get it myself, but I shouldn't lift anything heavy in my condition. Scotty? What? Your father called earlier. What did he want? He, uh, he wanted us to stop by the Metropolitan Club before we go. I told him that you would probably be in a hurry, but he insisted. Bobby, I already talked to him, and he said that he didn't want me to come by. Well, what can I tell you? He probably changed his mind. Bobby, I talked to him, and he see, just said that he didn't want it, that I'd say goodbye okay, to him already. all right, look. Your father made me promise that I wouldn't tell you, but I guess I'm going to have to. Tell me what? He wants to give us a little wedding present before we go. Bobby, if this was your idea, I Scotty, swear that this whole thing... it wasn't thing... my idea. Hey! Why, why is it so hard for you to understand a father wanting to give his son a wedding present? Come on, Bobby, do I even have to answer a question like that? All I know is that your father is going to be very hurt if we don't go by there, so it's your choice. My choice? Well, that's almost funny, Bobby. Let's go! Scotty?
Bobby, aren't you going to answer no, that? No, you said we were in a hurry, so come on. Let's hurry. tell you that Scotty did not want to come by here this morning and so I finally had to break down and tell him about you wanting to give us the wedding gift. Hey Lee, you look really terrible. Well, I have a case of the flu, son. Come on in. You take your coats off? No, thanks, Mr. Baldwin, but Scotty wants to get an early start. Listen, Lee, has Gail given you anything for any medicine yeah, for this? Yeah, 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 and I feel much better now. Really, I do. I don't want you worrying about me. I'm going to be fine. You right? just drink plenty of liquids and get a lot of rest. All right, thank you, Bobby. Now, Scotty, I want you and Bobby to take this from me. Hmm? Lee, I told you I didn't need any money. No, it, it isn't much now. It's just enough for your hotel in Toronto and, and expenses. Come on. Come on, Scotty. It's not really nice to refuse a wedding gift from your father. Look, Lee, you ought to get to the hospital and get checked out right away. I told you I'm going to be Lee, fine. I know what you told me, but I still think you look terrible. Oh, Scotty. No. Now, who are you calling? I'm calling Gail. Oh, son. Come on, Mr. Baldwin, come and sit down. Bobby, would you take this, please? I will, and thank you very much. You know how shy he is about accepting presents. Yeah. Yeah, hello, uh, may I speak to Dr. Gail Adamson, please? It, it's, it's very important. Scotty, why don't you get Gail on the phone? Would you let her talk to your father so we can get out of here? Bobby, I'm not leaving him like this. What are you going to do besides call? I'm taking him down to the hospital. That's what... Uh, Gail? Yeah, it's me, Scotty. Listen, Lee is in really bad shape, and, uh, listen, I think you better arrange to have him checked out right away, okay? Oh, gosh, Lee, Lee, how are you feeling? I just had a touch of flu, that's all. I know what all the fuss is about here. Gail, I had to help him get dressed. He couldn't even bend over. His back hurt so much. What about that sore throat? Is it, is it any worse? Just a little hard to swallow, that's all. It's going to get better, I know. Well, I, I couldn't see any inflammation when I examined it, but I've, I've gotten hold of Dr. Gonzalez, and he's going to check you out this morning. Gail, uh, so if you don't mind, I'd like to examine him first. From what I've just overheard, he's got the exact same symptoms as Mrs. Hewitt had when we admitted her. Oh, sure, sure, Jeff. Um, Scotty, look, Jeff and I can take Lee to the examining room if you and Bobby want to run along. No, Gail, I'm not leaving until I know that Lee's all right. Oh, yeah, come on. Right, come on, Lee. This way. Examination time for you. Yeah. Scotty? Scotty, what? should I wait here? Yeah, just wait right here, Bob. You are the last person I expected to see here. Makes two of us, Dan. As long as I'm here, Jesse, is there anything that I can do? Oh, no, thanks, Bobby. I don't think so. You had a phone call a while ago, though. Oh, yeah? From who? I don't know. He wouldn't leave his name. It was a man, and he said simply to tell you that uh, an old friend of yours from Jacksonville was disappointed in you. Make any sense to you? I could it. I've never been to Jacksonville in my life. Scotty. Yeah, uh, yeah I tried to ask Scott. Jeff what was wrong, but he said that you would explain. Well, Jeff wants to put Lee in isolation and run some tests. I told you that it was more than the flu. All right. Uh, that's no excuse for you to delay your trip any longer than you already no, have, son. Lee, I'm not leaving until I know that you're going to be all right. Scotty, I told you. I'm going Lee, to be come fine. On. I'm only going along Lee, with Lee, come Gail on. Don't, and... don't argue with me, all right? All right. Everything's all set. A couple of orderlies will be by in a minute to take you up there so we can get those tests started. All right? Hmm. Gail, could you watch uh, Lee for a minute? Sure. I, I want to go tell Bobby that we're not going until Jeff finds out what's wrong. <sighs> Scotty's so long. Well, he probably wants to wait to find out how Lee is before he leaves, Bobby. This is supposed to be the most important day of my life. Eh, I wouldn't worry about it, Bobby. If Scotty loves you as much as you love him, a few more hours isn't going to matter. Hey, how 
Well, are you ready to leave? No, Bobby. What did uh, Jeff find out when he examined your father, Scotty? Well, they're not sure. Jeff and Gail want to keep him here in the hospital so they can run tests on him and keep him under observation. Well, then there's not much you can do, is there? Bobby, I'm not leaving until they find out what is wrong with him. Scotty, I only have a few days leave. Well, Bobby, I don't know what to tell you. Then maybe you ought to call Mrs. Hardy and see if you can change it till next week. Next week it's going to be too late. Too late for what? Well, I already took today off, and it might be too late for Jesse to rearrange my work schedule. Well, then maybe you just ought to talk to Jeff. Oh. Well, here she comes. Bobby, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, don't get up, please, Dan. Gina Dante wants to see you in her office. Me? Yeah, she's waiting for you now. Oh. Oh, she's probably just wondering why we haven't left for Canada yet. Look, Scotty, can't we just go ahead up there? We'll come right back. No, we Bobby, I told you I'm to... not leaving until he's okay. Bobby, come on, she's waiting for you. She canceled another appointment, so what she has to say must be important. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Dante, Jesse said that you wanted to see me. Yes, Bobby, please sit down. I'm hoping somehow that you'll help me with something. What? Well, I'm a little confused. Yesterday, just before I examined you, I tested another patient for a pregnancy. Mrs. Henry Davenport. I think you saw her when she first came into the lobby. Anyway, Mrs. Davenport was convinced that she was pregnant for the fourth time. But when the lab sent back her report, the test was uh, negative. I learned in class that kind of thing can happen. That's a false pregnancy. Yes, I know, but... Somehow, my instincts told me that Mrs. Stavenport was definitely pregnant. So I called her this morning and ran another test on her. And, uh, oh, excuse me. Hello, Gina Dante. Yeah, it's Lester. Yes, Lester. I rushed Mrs. Davenport's test through for you. And? Well, the result's positive this time. Now, well, don't ask me how these things happen because I can't explain it myself. That's all right, Lester. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Well, my hunch was right. <laughs> Does that mean? That was the lab just now. And the second test on Mrs. Davenport came back positive. So what's that got to do with me? Well, the lab's so overworked these days that there's a possibility that they mixed up your test with Mrs. Davenport since I sent them both down at the same time. And if my hunch is right, I'm betting that's exactly what happened. know what happened down in that lab, but I do know that I am definitely pregnant. Well, even so, Bobby, I still would like to run another test, just to be sure. I'm sure. Because my family doctor told me that I was long before Scotty ever insisted that I see you, and I do not want to have another test. Gina, this whole thing has been just humiliating enough for me as it is. Bobby, I can't force you, but if I'm going to be your obstetrician, I still would like you to have another test. And I thought that I made it perfectly clear I am going back to Dr. Haynes. Well, yes, you did. But it seems to me Scotty wanted you to continue with me. Who's having this baby, Scotty or me? Well, you are. Well, then I think I should have the right to choose my own doctor. All right, I don't want to have an argument with you, Bobby. You talk it over with Scotty, but let me know as soon as you can, because I've got a roster full of patients. My decision is made. Thank you, Dr. Dante, for your concern. Well, I thought you'd be halfway to Canada by now. What happened? I, um, I'll explain later. I'm sorry. Hey, Bobby, sit down. Keep me company. Well, where is Scotty? He was here before. Well, he just got a call to go and see Gina Dante. Left a few minutes ago. 